Hey guys, welcome back. Lucian here with you again. Today I got for you a little mini tutorial on how to automate turning on and off the big reactor from Big Reactors Mod. So for the sake of transparency, this is the crack pack off of the AT launcher for version 1.7.10 of Minecraft. So for my big reactor, it is a 7x7x3 jelly cryothium and a 3x3 of fuel cells in their center. But the size and specifications of the reactor really have no no bearing on how to automate it. But just for those that are curious, there you go. Also on this side I have a power tap and a redstone port. We're going to talk about those in just a second. So the way we're going to automate the system is using Ender IO. If you're unfamiliar with Ender IO, I'm going to cover it just briefly and then we're going to move right on. So for the transfer pipes of energy, we have three different tiers and they're called conduits. You can see on the tooltip what their actual transfer rate is. You have a low tier one, a mid tier, and then a high tier. And of course they have escalating cost as the more expensive of the uh, transfer pipe is. So this reactor puts out about 4,000 RF a tick, so it wouldn't really make sense to use this. So we'd have to use the mid tier or the high tier of energy conduit. The second thing we're going to use is insulated redstone conduit. This is pretty cheap. It's redstone and silicon with a little bit of conduit binder, and that'll get you a little eight piece of eight pieces of conduit for that. The power monitor we're going to use is going to be kind of the brain of the system. Again, not very expensive. So we're going to start talking about the power monitor. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this guy down, and I'm going to throw down some energy conduit and then I'm going to put a capacitor down on this end. The capacitor is the storage bank of RF for Ender IO, the battery if you will. I also have a resonant energy cell in my inventory that will also work but I will sh as I show you in just a minute you gotta kinda read it a little bit differently. So the way the power monitor works it has to be attached to a piece of conduit and it's going to measure and analyze what's going on between this system and this system and then this system and this system. Basically it's going to analyze what's going on with this little conduit wire between these two blocks. So if I jump into the interface you can see right here you can see we have conduit storage is zero, it has zero RF stored and this capacitor bank right here. Nothing in the machine buffers and then basically an average output and input is zero because of course there's nothing going on. Now, in a newer version of Ender IO, the capacitor banks did get a little bit of an update. So if you're watching this, uh, you know, a month after it's posted, you'll probably see some new new uh, capacitors. I just don't have access to that new version yet. So now we kind of laid out what the interface looks like on here. I'm going to show you that the reactor is off. And I'm going to go into this second tab right here, which is called the in the uh, redstone control or engine control. We're going to go ahead and select that. And what I want to do is I want to tell it, I'll put a redstone signal when this capacitor right here is less than 40%. So when it's less than 40% full, I'll put a redstone signal. And then stop outputting a redstone signal when you get to, let's say, 95% full. Now I just made up those numbers. Uh, some numbers that I use as well. So we'll go ahead and we'll exit out of there. That's saved. So we'll pop down a redstone conduit there so that uh, that uh, redstone signal that it's going to send is going to go right into this redstone port. We can configure this that when you get a redstone signal either you're going to turn it on which is enable or turn it off which is disable. So we're going to go ahead and commit to that and when I press the commit button you should see the reactor turn on. So it's off right now. We have no power in our system. So commit. And you can see the reactor is now on. It's running. You're starting to fill up this capacitor and if I click on the interface you can see it's outputting about 4,000 RF a tick which is what I said about. It's a little over 4,000. So that's 4061 and again there you go, 4061. So this system should not take long to fill up. I'll kind of leave it here so you can kind of watch what's happened. 
So when the capacitor on the right side gets full, or gets to, I believe set it to 95%, you're going to see it kick off the reactor. So we'll just wait just another few seconds. It should not take long at all to do that. Come on. There we go. Almost 4,000 RF. Okay, should be just about there. Cool, and you saw it kick off the reactor. So now as I draw power out of here, let's say if I had this run into my machines, this power monitor will continue to monitor this capacitor bank and then turn on the reactor when more power is needed. Just a couple quick notes about this. You can see it does have a small pull of power, one RF a tick, to keep this power monitor going. So unfortunately you're just not going to be able to leave this going forever because it's going to have a little bit of a power draw. But that's really no big deal. One RF a tick is very minor in the bigger scheme of things. Now if I wanted to add some more capacitors, so this is now off and then that's going to recalibrate itself and it should turn back on once it figures out what's kind of what's happened okay so another couple of quick things to talk about you can use the energy cell just to, to get power as you can see right there but unfortunately it's just not going to register on here it still says the capacitor bank is still 10,000 RF which is what these two are right here 5,000 and 5,000 so you just gotta take that into to kind of consideration when you're making up this system but I like using the capacitors they're really cool and easy to use and uh, the system's not hard to set up just a few pieces of pipe and now you can just walk away from your reactor as it runs you can see it's kicked back on now that I broke uh, half of the capacitor bank and it should fill right back up pretty quickly there you go automated turning on and off of your big reactor so again hopefully you guys enjoyed it just a little quick tutorial my contact information is down below and I'll leave this out there if there's any other little tutorials or explanations that you want to see me do feel free to leave it in a comment send it to me at, through Twitter or however you want to do it I'll definitely give it a try and look into it. It's not a problem at all. So again, have a great day. I'll talk to you guys soon.